Welcome to the Future Her podcast. I'm your host Rosie and hi, hello, welcome. This is the first ever episode of Future Her podcast and I can't believe I'm actually sat here right now finally recording it. It feels so weird because currently right now nobody actually knows that I'm doing this but obviously by the time this first ever episode has been posted you guys are obviously going to know about it because it is kind of a thing then. But hi, Hello, welcome. Those of you that are listening on Spotify or Apple Music, hello. And for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, hi. (laughs) I am sat here in front of the camera. So if you do prefer to watch a podcast rather than listen to it as an audio file on Spotify or Apple Music, I am here. I'm sat in front of the camera as well, so make sure you head over to the Future Her podcast channel on YouTube as well. I honestly feel like I've wanted to start something like this podcast for so long now, and to feel like I'm actually sat here doing it, I'm so excited. I'm also a little bit nervous, because obviously it's my first episode. I feel like I've needed to have something like this to be able to almost talk to you guys and connect with you on more of a real, authentic level. And I wanna cover so many different wellness things, self-love, body positivity, lifestyle, and just so many girly topics that I wish that I could have listened to when I was a bit younger or things that I, even my current me, would want to listen to now. I'm going to be talking about everything. And obviously, with that being said, I'm going to jump straight into this first episode. I want to start talking about everything. From the title, you guys would have seen that this episode is going to be covering a whole eight step guide to body confidence and learning how to love yourself. And I feel like this is something that I speak about so much over all of my other social media platforms. If you're new and you've never seen me before, you've never listened to me before, you don't know anything about my life, I basically, one of the biggest parts of my life that's happened to me recently was that I had psoriasis. And it basically meant that my skin was covered in complete redness for almost two years of my life. And it really had the biggest impact on everything in my life, my mental health, my self-confidence, the way that I viewed myself, the way that I viewed everything in my life. And it's taught me so many life lessons to just how to love myself and I really want to be able to share those with you guys but even though learning to love yourself is a completely different journey for every single person like not one person will have the same self-love journey and I'm not here to tell you exactly how to do it but I'm here to kind of guide you and give you the best knowledge and the best advice that I've learned through my own self-love and body positivity journey. Anyway, let's get straight into today's episode and talk about a eight-step guide of exactly how to learn to love yourself. The first step of learning how to love yourself is understanding the actual concept of self-love. What does self-love actually mean to you and what does it actually mean as a whole? I feel like there's a big misconception around the term self-love and I feel like when it's mentioned people will automatically think of running a bubble bath or lighting a candle for themselves but when it actually comes down to it that isn't that's just one part of self-love and the whole term of self-love as a whole has a lot more in it rather than just having a bubble bath and lighting a candle. So completely forgetting about the bubble bath and lighting the candles, the actual definition of self-love is one's own regard for happiness and well-being. So that kind of covers a whole broad spectrum of different topics within that. But to understand that self-love isn't as simple as turning on a candle and lighting a bubble bath what oh my god I just said it the complete way around (laughs) wrong way around (laughs) my bad it's not as simple as turning on a bubble bath and lighting a candle there we go we've got it right now it's actually understanding that self-love is your own happiness and your own well-being it's not just as simple as doing those little tasks that you might see on social media and once you understand the actual definition of self-love and how important it is to figure out that it relies on your happiness and your well-being, then you can do things that work towards both your happiness and your well-being and that will all fall under having that complete understanding of learning how to love yourself. 
Okay, so moving on to step two, and this is probably my favorite and if not the most important stage of learning how to love yourself and is having positive self-talk and having a positive inner voice towards yourself. I feel like this step's one of the most important because once you change the way that your inner voice talks about yourself or to yourself, it will completely change your mindset of how you are as a person and it will completely change your mindset of how you view life. So instead of having a negative inner voice, instead of say for example, you mess something up or you do something that's embarrassing, instead of your first initial thought in your head being something negative or being ashamed of yourself or something like that, as soon as you learn how to switch that inner voice to something positive and to something that's perhaps gonna help you out rather than just shut you down, that is the key of learning how to love yourself. And it's from that point that you'll be able to switch your mindset completely and you'll be able to understand the positives in your life. You'll be able to understand the positives of you and who you are. If you think about how it would feel to live a life with a voice in your head that's completely negative, that's telling you horrible things all the time, you can imagine that your life would be negative and full of so many horrible experiences, right? So if you switch that thinking and imagine that inner voice inside your head to be loving, to be compassionate, to be it to help you out with every situation, you as a person would feel so much happier and you'd feel so much more positive about yourself and about so many different life situations. So that's the key. You need to switch that inner voice to be saying all these loving things as if you're talking to, I don't know, your best friend or your sister or your daughter or just someone, another female in your life that you love. As long as you switch that thinking as if you're speaking to that person, try and speak to yourself like it because it's gonna switch everything up. It's gonna make you feel like this happy person that's positive and it's gonna be one of the main things that you do to start being able to love who you are as a person. If your inner voice is positive, then everything in your life and everything about yourself is also going to be positive. Step three is embracing your authentic self and understanding your own journey to self-discovery. I think embracing your own authentic self comes from finding out what you love in life. The minute you start to figure out the activities that you like to do, the things that you love to go and see, different hobbies that you like to do, and you start to figure out what in life brings you happiness and fulfillment, you'll start to understand and figure out what deep down actually makes you happy. Once you find out what goals you have, different interests that you have in life, and different things that will make you happy, it will lead to you becoming more of a fulfilled person. You'll start to feel better about yourself. I think a huge thing that I've heard a lot of people say that I just love and it always sticks with me is focus on more how you feel rather than how you look and the more you focus on how you feel and the happier that you begin to feel in yourself the better you'll just be as a person. For example one of my guilty pleasures that I actually haven't spoken about anywhere ever before is one of my hobbies that I love doing that actually makes me feel very happy and makes me feel really in touch with my real authentic self is actually Lego. I know it's a bit funny because I've never actually met another 23 year old girl that enjoys doing Lego, but here I am. That's one of my hobbies that actually just makes me feel so happy. And the more I've actually started doing it recently, the more I am feeling happier in myself. I feel like I have many goals to achieve. I feel like I have just a little hobby, something that I like doing that makes me happy. Step four is self-acceptance and having a positive body image. I think one of the best things that I've learned about body image and self-acceptance is the 90%, 10% theory. So this is basically where you understand that when you see someone online or in a magazine or anything, that version of that person, when they're posing in a certain way and the lighting's good or they're wearing amazing clothing, they've got their makeup on, their hair's been done, that part of that person is 10% of them. 
That is how they'll spend 10% of their life. The other 90% of their life, however, is makeup free, sitting in a position that's perhaps slouched and not as flattering for their body, not sat in amazing lighting, no makeup, no hair, in comfortable clothing, and that's how that person will spend 90% of their life. Once you start to understand that there's no physical way that you should be comparing your 90% to someone else's 10%, it's impossible to look this certain way 100% of the time because it is only 10% of the time, even less, even 5% of the time that someone will be posing and looking amazing, looking their best self because it's just impossible to be like that 24-7. Step five, quite a self-explanatory step is setting boundaries. So the more you set boundaries for yourself as an individual and within other relationships in your life, like romantic relationships, within friendships, within families, those boundaries that you set will also determine how you feel about yourself. You set boundaries that are low and you let people treat you like shit, basically, you will then also feel like shit. So you basically need to set yourself boundaries that are really high. You need to set yourself boundaries that you know you're worthy of. And once you set those, everyone in your life will live up to those expectations and treat you the way that you deserve to be treated. Your boundaries are low and you set low expectations for yourself and for friendships and for relationships, you're just going to get treated poorly and that's going to have a huge impact on the way that you view yourself and what you think you're worthy of and that will then also determine how much you love yourself as a person. So you have to remember to always set your boundaries high with any friendships, relationships, anyone that you invite into your life because the way that those people will treat you will determine the way that you feel about yourself. Step six is practicing self-care. I think this is one of the most obvious steps of learning how to love yourself and I think it's one of the most common and mostly spoken about steps on the internet and just within daily life is just self-care so self-care can come in so many different forms and you can do whatever makes you feel good that's basically the whole basis of self-care is doing things that make you feel good so for me things that make me feel good and my versions of self-care is journaling meditation i love skincare and doing things that make me feel good about myself Obviously, self-care can be different for anyone. It's basically just practicing things that make you feel good about yourself and your general well-being. Practicing self-care is something that quite a lot of people kind of need to dedicate time to. I do. I If I don't dedicate time for myself to practice self-care, then I can notice a difference in the way that I feel about myself. I will always need to dedicate a, around an hour in the morning for my self-care, for my journaling, for my workouts, for my meditation. If I don't dedicate that time for my own self-care, I'll know that I'll feel crap during the day. And it's similar to at night time. I always dedicate an hour at night time for myself to do my skincare, to have a shower, to do my hair, to make my house look clean. They're all different things that I do to make myself feel happy and feel good in my own well-being. And if I don't do those and if I don't make the time to do those... I'll have noticed an impact on my mental health and just how I genuinely feel about myself. I feel like people look at self-care as quite a beauty related thing and it doesn't necessarily always need to be beauty. There's so many different things that people will find as self-care methods like journaling or mindfulness. There's so many different things and I feel like everyone's version of self-care is different and it's just about finding those things that are good for you and things that make you happy and make you feel good. So the seventh step of learning how to love yourself is surrounding yourself with positive people. I cannot stress this enough. Honestly, I have been surrounded by a lot of negative energy in the past and it's safe to say it had the worst toll on my mental health and the way that I viewed myself and how I loved myself. It completely changed everything in my life and it made me view myself as a completely different person. Being around positive people and positive energy is one of the best things that you can do to be the best version of yourself. If you're around people that don't match your energy, it's going to drag you down and it's going to make you feel 
unworthy and it's going to just make you feel crap. When I'm around someone that is literally the same as me, I feel this huge feeling of just happiness I feel so uplifted I feel like I can do anything in life I feel like I can achieve any dream I feel like I can do literally anything when I'm around good energy when I'm around bad energy it makes me doubt myself it makes me feel incapable and it makes me lose a love for myself and you can't be around that if you have people in your life that drain your energy and they don't have a positive impact in your life it's not worth being around Honestly, I've learned this in probably one of the hardest ways possible. It's just not worth being around. You need to remove yourself from situations that are energy draining and you need to be away from people that are energy drainers. It's going to affect your whole life and it's just not worth it. I promise you, make sure you prioritize time finding people that are energy givers and people that have a positive impact on your life and that will make you happy. And that brings me to the last step of learning how to love yourself, which is step eight, and that is prioritizing self-growth. Prioritizing personal growth is a way to find new interests, take risks and find different opportunities in life that are gonna push you out of your comfort zone. The more you get pushed out of your comfort zone and the more you take risks in life, the more it's going to make you grow as a person. And I think prioritizing doing things that are going to help you grow as a person are going to be the things that make you love yourself more because you're going to feel more proud of yourself. There's plenty of things that I've done that are, have pushed me out of my comfort zone and it's all for, always for the better. It's always going to make you a better person. But as soon as you step out of that comfort zone and you push yourself towards doing new things, you're going to grow as a person so much. And it's going to have such an impact on the way that you view yourself and the way that others view you as well. But that is my eight step guide of learning how to love yourself. I feel like all of these points are huge things to take away and I hope all of you can take this away from this episode and implement them into your life and I hope that I've been able to help a bunch of you with understanding some different topics and exploring some new things that you might not have thought about before. And it's important to know that self-love isn't something that will just happen overnight. Self-love is a whole lifelong journey and it's something that you have to practice every single day and you have to prioritize as well because if you don't prioritize self-love and learning how to love yourself and just yourself as a whole, as a whole person, you're not gonna grow and you're not gonna feel the best that you possibly can. You just have to remember that every day you just need to take small steps in your self-love journey because it is lifelong. It's not something that will just happen overnight and I just hope that by speaking about these eight steps on my first ever podcast episode, it is some things for you guys to take away and bring into your life to be able to make you grow as a person and ultimately help you learn how to love yourself have made it this far in my first ever podcast episode I want to say thank you for sticking around thank you for listening to it and I really hope that you've enjoyed my first ever episode I've got so so many different episodes planned and I'm going to be uploading them every single week on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, whichever way that you prefer to listen. If you're listening to this episode on Spotify or Apple Music, I'd really really appreciate if you could leave a five star review. It's super simple, you just need to basically press one button. I'd really appreciate that, it would go a long way and it would help my podcast so so much obviously if you're watching this on youtube if you subscribe to the future her podcast channel turn on the notifications interact with this video all of that good stuff that really helps me so much it helps me to learn and see what you guys like and what type of episodes you enjoy the most i'd also really love if you could leave a comment if you're watching this on youtube about different types of episodes that you'd like to see and drop me a dm on instagram as well my instagrams it's rosie daniels if you don't already follow me on there make sure you do i'm going to be posting so many different updates and if you could send me a dm or anything of any other future episodes that you want to see that would be amazing but thank you so much for listening to or watching my first ever episode of the future her podcast and always remember that every single day you're doing it for the future her